and it's headphones nail. to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my review for the latest batch of stuff that I've been watching and games I've been playing. So I'm going to jump right into it, mostly because there's not a whole lot to talk about. Um, I actually did not get a chance to start watching Fallout on Amazon Prime as of yet, but I did watch another movie, a superhero movie, so um, that's going to be on this week's list of reviews, and then part two is going to be on the set of reviews for next week. So, um, I'm going to try watching Fallout for sure, but, um, especially since now that the Bad Batch is done, I can, I have a little bit more time, but, um, that's neither here nor there. So as far as this week's cover image goes, it was again done in Google Gemini with the um, caption of a mutant wizard in the multiverse with flowers in space. So as we go through the episode, it'll make a little bit more sense. Um, so to start, start it off, I watched the season or, and series finale of The Bad Batch. The cavalry has arrived. So with the actual um assault by the bad batch on um the tantus base we have um the main doctor guy try, um trying to keep uh, maintain control and order and all that and, and in the middle of all that he gets a call by governor tarkin who ends up showing up to find out what really is going on and try to salvage the situation so it's kind of a two-way battle by that um doctor guy and then the lady who was overseeing the kids um fi ends up finding echo and they end up working together to help the kids escape and help with the rescue plan so as far as it rescuing the kids and the clones go so all in all a very very packed episode um in general i did enjoy um everything that happened because we see that rampart learns about what project necromancer is he wants um and I'm going to say Nala say because I keep forgetting the one that um, Omega is friends with. But I guess she tells him about what Project Necromancer is, how that deals with the Emperor um, and all of that. Which would have been, I was kind of expecting and I, I'm hoping I forgot that we were going to get a speech by the Emperor in the season. That's kind of what I remember in the trailer. So I'm going to go back and watch that. But um, as far as Tanta's base goes... Um, the general fallout for everything that happened because of what Clone Force 99 did ends up um, falling into Tarkin's hands because it allows him to free up the funding that was going to that and send all of it directly into uh, Project Stardust, Project Stardust, aka the Death Star. So I thought that was a nice bit of um, uh, connection to Star Wars lore. Uh, we have the lady giving him the analysis that everyone has died, so that kind of gives the Bad Batch an out as far as going back into hiding and no one looking for them in Omega, so everything works out to how they wanted. It, um, it also lets them go into um, hiding and isolation, letting the clones go and live out their lives and all of that stuff. So um, in general, I thought the episode was good. Uh, we also did have a bit of a fast forward, so... Um, Omega's a little bit old, uh, or Omega and Hunter are definitely older, um, and we have her try escaping to want to go and join the Rebellion, so I am kind of hoping that we get, like, another, like, a special couple of episode arc of how she joins the Rebellion, or what her role in that is, uh, what ha happens, or maybe even, like, a quick, um, movie like they do with certain, um, TV shows a little bit later of um, her role in the rebellion. What happens? Does she get caught by the Empire, um, and or does she, you know, end up start getting um, chased after, kind of like a Jin Urso storyline? Um, and basically, yeah, just whatever happens to her. So that was kind of the biggest downside for me is we don't really get too much on the flip side as far as. Um, a more in show um 
information about you know project necromancer the importance of it seeing all of it um on screen the results of it because i would have actually i actually kind of liked what they did with the you know aging um omega older um and then also even closing out the episode or even having one more episode where she goes off to join the rebellion and because the you know hunter is not following her ends up getting caught and um helping the empire again with the research um all those years later so one of those things where um they could have rounded that out a little bit more just tie something out at the end of the finale or have one more episode so that's kind of really the only downside to it um granted we're supposed to know what project necromancer is but it would have been nice to actually around all of that stuff out so um, neither here nor there but overall a good conclusion to the show wasn't terribly disappointed by it the whole assault on the base was a very nicely done action sequence on multiple fronts so they rounded that out very nicely um as far as x-men 97 um episode 8 tolerance is extinction I am still working on watching that episode, so I haven't seen... I'm, I'm like halfway through it. I actually got distracted and started doing a few other things, so um, I didn't have a chance to finish the episode yet, but um, it looks like um, we're still, the mutants are going to find out about that um, Professor X is still alive, so um, the fallout from that and dealing with finding out that he's still alive so we'll see how all of that goes so i'll have a better review next week when i have a chance to watch part one and part two and then i think the week after is going to be the season finale with part three of tolerance's extinction so looks like or i'm hoping it turns out to be a very interesting conclusion to the season um now as far as the movie that i watched that does not deal with or that replaced my watching of fallout this week was justice league crisis on infinite earths part one so i was actually browsing my google discover feed and they were talking about crisis on infinite earths part two and i'm like well i don't remember seeing part one and what is this all about and as it turns out um part one of crisis on infinite earths released back in january of this year and part two just came out in April of 2024. So I decided to give it a watch, uh, see what it's all about, see if I'm going to like it, dislike it. Based on the trailer, I like the animation style. So gave it a watch and overall it was very interesting. They, um, you know, there's a this wall, blue wall of energy thingy that's destroying all the um, Earths and all these multiverses because apparently a lot of stuff starts there. So the heroes have to go and figure out how to stop it. A lot of it's from the point of view of the Flash because he can go through the dimensions um, and he's able. And so we get an old Flash, young Flash, his counterparts, different variations of the Justice League and all of that. Um, and then um, a scientist guy who creates an android AI to help revive his life and get him to or help him live longer which is bastardized or is funded but then bastardized by um lex luther so overall a very good movie so now i'm curious to see and ultimately at the end of this film they're able to stop it so i'm actually curious to see what they do in part two so i am going to be watching that next just to see what it's all about and or you know how they progress the story arc and why they're doing it in um, ultimately, I guess three parts because in the news there, it looks like there is going to be a third part coming out later this year. So um, I'm kind of curious to see if it is that much content or if they're trying to merge a lot of different storylines over the course of a couple of movies just to encompass all the different story arcs. Um, so with that being said, as far as other stuff going on this past week, I um, um, so one of the side things that doesn't really relate to um, anything um, specific is the um, flower, the super flower bloom that you kind of see in different parts of the country, especially after it rains, but usually in spring. So I had a chance to check the uh, flower fields out in Carlsbad, California. They have all these different fields. They have all these different color uh, flower types, uh, colors, and there is a pretty big field overlooking the beach. Um, and then you have a separate section with you know the American flag and sunflowers and things like that. So when you go and visit, you can actually have a good photo opportunity um, next to this uh, little flower fountain and some 
um, small flowers in a garden with the big fields behind you and then you can go up through the field walk around all of them um, they have different stopping points so if you want to pay for the wagon train you can go on that and go around the whole uh, view of the fields to see all of it and then if you want to go and stop at their various stopping points so if you want to stop at certain areas you can or if you then want to go and stop at you know walk to different points and see them yourself you can do that but it's a very beautiful set of our fields of flowers definitely worth watching and then um as you're leaving they do have your usual gift shop so you can um buy some of the flower seeds if you want to um buy some of those flowers that you like they have different tools they have you know pot, um, some small equipment for little kids um and different things like that so as you're um going through the gardens you can see they spend a lot of time and effort to um set up the fields so in the link for the show notes i actually have a link to the video version so you can see several of the photos that i took the upside to it was that it was pretty easy to take the flowers because it was a clear sunny day but the downside was that it was a little bit hazy and because of all the colors the contrast is always a little bit weird but the you'll get the gist of it because they're all flowers you know what a flower looks like so you'll be able to make out a lot of the different colors and the change in colors you know between multicolor red pink white yellow and those fields i did, took, did take pictures from different angles so you'll see that and then I round out the end of the video with actual video. So we did go around on that tractor train kind of thing. So it was a bit of a bumpy ride. But um, when you're looking at when you're watching the video, you'll see, um, you know, kind of get the, a video or a view of it as you're going around the fields from different views above it and on the side and all of that. So it kind of makes it easy to see how good the how good the fields are, how beautiful it is um and then like and because the tractor thing was a little bit bumpy that's not as good of quality of video as i want it to be but in general you get the idea of how good um the fields are and how good the setup for all of that is so um if you ever have a chance to go check it out i always i do recommend going to check it out it's not necessarily an all-day event maybe a couple hours to a few hours just so you can go to the fields there is a lot of walking involved, or it depends on how much in the fields you want to go see, but there is enough walking going on. So if you do want to go all the way around the fields, you will need time, good shoes and all of that. And that will take some time. So um, I recommend planning for that accordingly and um, dressing accordingly, especially if it's sunny and warm. If you go during a certain different parts of the year where it's not as um, sunny or if you go in the evening when it's cooler then you should be a little bit more okay and you can get you know more evening sunset shots and things like that so something to keep in mind there um so with that being said and that's like and for me i'm not too much into gardening so there's not too much to stay there but it was beautiful it was nice seeing and then there's an area for the kids as far as like a butterfly field where it's a small garden with butterfly statues a maze a playground and things like that and then poinsettias and that sort of stuff so if you have kids you can take them and they might like it too if you know they like to play outside now as far as the video game um updates go i have started or i have continued my playthrough of star wars knights of the old republic to the sith lords so i'm done with paragus and now i'm on telos uh which reminds me that i do need to get put a status update for that as far as where i'm at in the game so i'll pro probably at some point during telos i'll give an update but um i've escaped paragus um i'm on telos did the whole detention thing i've gotten my equipment back so now i'm doing some of the various missions around the station so i've met the rhodian brothers um i need to go into i got one into or i need to go into the docking bay to get the um droid and all of that so I'm, I'm i've been taking on some of those various missions but one of the things that i hit that hit me as i was playing the game was that um citadel station is kind of like the uh, fully hashed out expansive version of yavin station from knights of the old republic one because one of the things when you're playing not KOTOR 1 is that you do have Yavin Station, but you, it feels like they had an extra planet or extra, you know, code and room in the game where they wanted to put something but couldn't hash it out. So Citadel Station is kind of that because you have a full-on station, you still have a Rodian shop, 
and as you're going through it, it's kind of it's very similarly matched, but updated to have be a little different enough. So when you're playing the game, you have you know Rodians that sell you those, these special wares, you know blue lightsaber crystal, uh, special equipment, and things like that. And then you have a workbench. So um, think of that. So for me, if you're missing Yavin Station, Citadel Station kind of makes up for that in the Fifth Lords. So. I'm kind of um, changing my tune on that a little bit just because that's kind of what it is. So, um, but it's, and that actually comes at a good point to do have that because you can, you know, get rid of equipment, uh, buy new equipment, upgrade stuff, and things like that. So, um, definitely take that advantage to upgrade your armor and equipment and things like that. So, um, there is that. Um, and then for uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon, I did have a chance to play the map Electric Fields in the Ruby Group set of um, maps. And overall, pretty interesting. It was kind of a weird thing because all the um, guests were afraid of um, scary roller coasters. So I had to, you know, make it uh, less, make a few of the rides less scary so I can get more people in the parks and keep a good rating. So it worked out, but I had to make simpler and simpler uh, roller coasters and I ended up maxing out the money I borrowed to do that. But I was able to uh, um, accomplish the mission objectives. So it was interesting enough. So I'm going to move on to the um, next um, map. But all in all, it was a good, a thing where it's like all right well you're building a simple park you're not really doing anything too crazy so i guess a lot of the resources are related to um building i guess a lot of smaller rides versus big scary rides so you have more pe rides for people to join the um park or so for more people come into the park and ride the ride and you have bigger crowds and more fun that way so um, that's I guess my tip for this map is to do stuff do things like that for this particular map So that is all for this particular um, Episode so if you have any questions comments feedback or anything like that you can comment on this post on social media um, All the links are up on the website at headphonesneal.reviews all the videos are, um, and gameplay videos especially are up on the YouTube site at youtube.com slash Patel n01 and of course, if you want early access to the podcast, uh, early access to the video version, um, an ad-free version of the episode, and all that good stuff, you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash patelin01. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.